Please welcome Obi Felton, Flourish Labs. Hi, I'm Obi Felton. I used to lead Moonshot Projects at X, Alphabet's Innovation Lab, and I've had the pleasure of serving on the Falling Walls Venture Jury in previous years. I'm excited to introduce you to Chemify, a true moonshot. Chemical space is bigger than outer space and harder to search. Chemists have to discover and make new molecules by hand, which is time consuming and sometimes even dangerous. You might have heard of companies using AI to discover new molecules. Chemify closes the loop from code to molecules. Once their AI has identified a new molecule, their robots manufacture it. Think of it like a search engine and a printing press for new molecules combined. It doesn't take the chemist out of the loop, but it does take the boring bits out of chemistry. I hope you enjoy meeting Lee Cronin, the founder of Chemify and VGS professor at the University of Glasgow. If ever there was a brilliant mad chemist with a big idea, it's Lee. Breaking the wall of molecular discovery deep in chemical space. Lee Cronin, Chemify. Now I know we all hated chemistry at school, <laughs> but if you take a look to your left and look to your right, before the turn of the century, about one in three of us will get cancer during our lifetime. Now it's two out of three. By 2050, it's going to be three out of three, thanks to detection and other innovations. So how are we going to get to grips with producing the molecules we need, given the fact that five billion people on Earth right now don't have access to drugs? The problem is the chemical discovery and synthesis process is broken. Chemistry is 200 years old. There's a lot of heritage there in the literature, a lot of buried information. But the problem is we don't know how to get that information out of the literature and make it playable. We don't have any way to make chemistry work on demand. Most molecules today are made by hand. Most um, biotechs actually commissioned molecules to be made in Ukraine, or they did, and in Shanghai. The synthesis is complex and slow. The know-how is lost. The secret chemists with secret information with secret spices somewhere. And the, as I said, key chem chemicals are made in geopolitically risky locations. To add insult to injury, only 0.1% of known molecules can be made and are commercially available. So what can we do to solve this? Well, what I've done as a chemistry professor turned entrepreneur is I realized that we could actually make a robot, you could push a button and do chemistry on demand. We call it computing, a bit like computing, but rather than hello world, hello aspirin, hello taxol, hello Viagra. We actually have code for Viagra, no joke. How does it work? We make a chemical program, so we basically teach the robot to do chemistry. We have hardware, which is as cheap as possible um, automated uh, test tube or round bottom flask. This is a prototype here. Chemify is dis dis designing this at the moment to make it kind of a bit more user friendly so we can do discovery, optimization, and manufacture. <coughs> yes, manufacture of small amounts of molecules on demand. Same footprint, think about it like a CPU making many of them. So we are going to build the infrastructure for computing. We're going to make Chemical programs reproducible. Academics will publish code. They can copy each other's code. Think about getting access to a molecule invented in Glasgow yesterday, in Paris tomorrow. Think about having that GitLab access. We make it safer and efficient because the chemists are handling liquids all the time. They're not dropping stuff. They're not getting stuff on their, on their person. They don't have to work in a fume hood. We can make it modular and scalable. We can make it 10 times cheaper, which is unfortunately, and the capitalist in me, and what I've been told is I need to get there. And in fact, it's a, local, it's a natural outcome of being able to program the system. And it allows us to put server farms doing chemistry anywhere. We don't have to offshore, we can reshore, distribute. Think Amazon for chemistry, Amazon for molecules you need. So what are we going to do initially? Well, we're going to make a search engine, and that is kind of the grand kind of cell for working with biotechs and pharma to search 30 trillion molecules. Within two years, we will be able to make any one of 30 trillion molecules for sure. We've also got a way of making molecules on demand. 
This was funded by DARPA. It was actually a suitcase-sized robot. The schematic you see here can make peptides, RNA, anti-cancer drugs, all in the size of a suitcase. So we're going to do drug discovery, materials discovery, but what are we going to do to get to market in the short term? We are basically going to be a CRO to make those molecules that are, uh, we can't get right now because of fragile supply chains. We are then going to keep learning chemical space so we can mine chemical space, get the search engine product, product out there, make the demo plants, in fact, put them everywhere, as you can see, have networks of them, and also kind of be the first digital chemistry company. To do this, we've built this team. I built the team. We, we seeded the company earlier this year. I hired 25 people in 12 weeks. We've got a head of chemistry, head of engineering, head of software. We've got business development. And what we're trying to do right now is to make sure that we can bring the team together to scale, to make sure that the code really does work, and we can also build a search to actually make unknown molecules and connect quantum dreams to molecular realities. Thank you. <clears throat> OK, can we have the four minutes back for the Q&A session right now? And let's start right away. Who would like to? Yes, please. Let me in first. Yeah, thanks for the presentation. Um, so maybe just a comment. I mean, I feel that your, your scope is very broad. I mean, I, I see two things. You have the, the, um, the algorithm part and the, and the search engine, and you have the automation part to produce small particles. Wouldn't it be maybe um, better to, to focus on one or the other? So one naturally leads to the other. So you learn the chemistry, make stuff. Chemicals practical. It's not about AI. It's about physically capturing that information. We have done that so we can manufacture. If you know how to make stuff, you can then vary for searching. They're the same thing connected together. We've published five papers in Science and Nature in the last three years, going through that intact chain and got those 10 patents to show how we do it. First place to start is making molecules that people need now. Then with that know-how, search for people, molecules that people need tomorrow. So that builds the business. More questions about computing, chemistry on demand? Stefan, please. Here comes the microphone. Thank you so much. What kind of technological infrastructure are you using? I mean, with 30 trillion uh, molecules, I think you need some quite, quite some computing power. No. It's just a standard test tube, a few pumps and valves. And what we've done is we literally take the known literature and reproduce it and make sure it works, because most literature doesn't work. Once we know that, it's just new enumeration from there. So that's the trick. Right now, there is a company that has this standard manual enumeration, but they can't go very deep. It seems kind of whimsical and impossible, but it really works. We can right now cover 50% of medical chemistry space just with 150 reactions we've encoded. By the time we get to 1,500, we can make any molecule, or let's say 95% of all molecules. Nothing is left out. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of questions. So here, this one, and then we will have Geneviève, please, and then we will go back there. Please. Um, as a fellow professor, I was curious how you're planning to get uh, chemists to start publishing in the format you talked about as publishing chemistry as code since uh, academia? <laughs> so in a secret hobby, I've been given some money from the Schmidt Futures to make the standard open, and I'm giving away chemical code for unvalidated codes for chemists to get used to it. I've also written a textbook for undergraduates to train them in digital chemistry to start to change the culture. And the first thing we're going to do is sell molecules to people that don't um, want to bore the chemist with traditional stuff so the chemist can focus on the deeper stuff and we'll get that natural adoption. It's a hard problem, but, we're, but I think we're going to do it. Okay, Geneviève, please, and then we will go to the back. You said it seems whimsical, it does. So what are the entrants that you put in there? What, what so just chemistry do you put in there so that at the end of your pumps and everything you get the product? So the way it works, is you, the right, way the search engine works right now is you draw the molecule, it then searches its database and spits out the quickest route to get there. Think it like Uber. It can give you number of routes, cost, time. It tells you the reagents to buy as long as they're accessible. You load them into the robot, press a button. The, the system makes the molecule, purifies it, presents it to you, all on the scale of a human being. OK, the next question is here to the back. Uh, I'm, he was waiting. 
And we so have 30 seconds, so short. So a typical uh, computer program is hardware agnostic, so it doesn't matter whether I run it on Intel chip or on AMD chip. So um, how strongly does your chemical program depend on the exact details of the machine you are using, the robot? That's a perfect question. It doesn't. It's hardware agnostic, and we can make bridges to routine, known hardware. OK. Frank, would you like to ask your question quickly, even if we have no time for an answer? <laughs> the, the synthesis would you identify, are there also suitable for quam synthesis and kiloquam synthesis the same? Yes, yes by, no answer. by numbering up. Yes. OK, great. Well, we made it. Thank you very much. <laughs>